Good morning. So it's breakfast time and I'm avoiding doing these uh, break lines like the plague. This is what I should be doing. This is what's expected of me. So I think I'm going to do something else. Now if you thought I was kidding about working till I can't move in the garage anymore, um, just so happened my garage was hit hit by a tornado the other day. A tornado in the form of me looking for a steering bracket. That I may or may not had on this truck. Having three trucks that were very similar, I know a bracket exists for a steering column and one of my trucks had it, but was it this one? I don't know. So, in the spirit of wax on, wax off. Yes, the brake booster is off again. That's going to be getting mounted. But what I want to talk to you about today is steering. And more specifically, electric power steering. Prius power steering or power assist as they call it for this truck. All right, so these trucks, this one in particular, came with this power steering hydraulic pump. And in addition to leaking all over the place, it also provided some assistance when steering. But I believe that you can't just take a automatic steering box and use it as a manual because it's not geared properly and it, it's actually harder to turn a disabled automatic steering box than it is a manual one designed to be used manually. I believe the gearing is different. So I went out and uh, installed a manual steering box. See it doesn't have the octopus tentacles on it so there are no hoses going in and out. It's self-contained and um, it's geared differently so that you can go ahead and steer it just with hydraulics. Now I believe back in the day, manual cars, correct me if I'm wrong, manual trucks used larger steering wheels, maybe 15 inches rather than 14 or 13 like the automatics, perhaps. So I installed this manual steering box that I happen to have and now I'm going to install the Prius So here is the Prius steering pump or steering motor or power steering, whatever you want to call it. This I believe is out of a second generation Prius and uh, originally, let me show you how I had it mounted. So here's the cab of the truck and my first attempt, so that's how I had it originally. Now. You may say, well, yeah, good for you. Why don't you just mount it there? Well, it's not so easy on these trucks because I'm just holding it there and it doesn't have the bracket, the brake bracket. And it doesn't have the steering column or the rest of it. And I didn't even put the steering wheel on it here for to show you. So. I ditch this idea. Um, you could make it work, but there's just too much math involved. And I didn't want to run the Prius steering column, if you will, and um, use its turn signal stuff and so on, and steering column and the housing and all that. So I'm just going to mount it 
here basically grafted in place of this shaft. This is what we call an intermediate shaft, so it runs from here. This is called a rag joint, and uh, it's probably made out of recycled tires. It's uh, very primitive, and a lot of guys ditch it, and they will install a universal joint, U-joint. But then they'll notice the purpose of this thing, and it is to absorb vibration. Now, it's not really this loose as a goose, uh, I'm showing it to you sort of disassembled partially. So it absorbs the uh, vibrations and the shock and it doesn't transfer that to the steering column so you're not exactly riding a Harley Davidson there, just a truck. So anyway, um, I think we can pull this off by mounting it here like so and uh, tapping into this um, rag joint because this has a shaft of its own. I removed it, but this would go on there. So, so I am always amazed how I need a chunk of wood to mock up things or get things on or off. It really amazes me how valuable a piece of junk wood is. Let's see if I can show you what I'm thinking here. So with this, with that uh, shaft, it, first of all, it's going to slide in more here. You can see it's a bit long, but so what that it's long, we can always measure once and cut it twice and uh, make it shorter. So I think that could tap in there. Now, as Damien might say, some of you are screaming at the TV, you idiot, you're going to get rid of this safety uh, shaft. This is a telescoping, telescoping, why can't I say that word, shaft. So it it's designed during a collision to um, go in and out of itself or to just kind of slide inside of it to avoid uh, sending a javelin through the heart of the driver, okay? But I may be foregoing that or I might try to incorporate it, but even if I forego it, I'm not too concerned because when I mount the steering, <clears throat> Prius steering pump or steering motor, it's going to be mounted to these two bolts. These are the upper two bolts of the um, upper control arm. So that will be a fixed item here and it shouldn't allow the shaft to uh, move forward during a collision. And also there would be a universal joint that could be used um, right about here. This guy. So this could be used as a sacrificial thing and I see uh, those of you concerned with safety, and I'm no expert, so, you know, um, that would break before sanding all of it through, um, you know, the chest of the driver. Now, how are we going to mount this? So, how are we going to mount this? If you watch the video on the brake booster and the proportioning valve, we designed a two-piece bracket. So now we've graduated to three piece. So I'm gonna use something like this, and this video is raw. I mean, I'm planning this on this video right now in real time, so it's not like I have a, you know, a CAD diagram or a blueprint of this thing, and now I'm just backfilling the info, you know. We're, we're designing this phenomenal bracket here in, on live TV in real time. So I'm gonna make this vertical bracket here, okay? It will um, have holes, oops. It will have holes there for these two bolts. Of course, it's gonna drop down about an inch. It's going to sit above the um, shims for the uh, camber and caster adjustments on these trucks. That's, that's what the shims are for there, for those of you not familiar with uh, American um, state-of-the-art technology. And, um, 
So this will be our vertical bracket. The nice thing about this mount is that I can shim it and move it forward if it's not a line right or move it back a bit like that. And uh, yeah, so this is gonna be the vertical bracket. All right, so now let's take a look at the other uh, portion of the bracket. So there's gonna be two pieces. So there's gonna be one piece on this side and I don't know why everything I design is the sandwich design or what I call the Oreo cookie design, but it seems like that's all I do is Oreo cookie designs. And then this bracket will be on this side and I'm trying to see where I thought of it. I think it's going to mount maybe to one of these two bolts right here somehow. I, uh, when I held it up there, it made sense. So um, we'll see, but basically, Looking at the whole design then, it is going to be, you know, a smaller bracket here and a larger bracket here, and then that piece uh, wedged, or the pump or the motor wedged in between them. Of course, everything's going to get trimmed, but this is just me uh, brainstorming here, spitballing, if you will. So there's the three holes will hold the, the larger of the two bracket pieces and then I don't know if both of these will hold the other one or just one bolt I think the way I had it it was just one bolt was it I think it's like this how I want it so, uh, also I'm not going to take this apart and show you but uh, you can reclock this and um, reclocking just means uh, uh, you undo these two bolts and you can twist it around so that this could maybe point here, point here, the motor would be here rather than going this way type of deal. Um, I think I've reclocked it once and then I put it back to the way it was because that for under the dash still made more sense. Or maybe it's reclocked now, I don't quite remember. All right, and there we have it. Our two holes are drilled. And yes, I spared you from the lecture on how to drill holes this time. Let's see if that fits. Okay, that looks good. Now the other one has a uh, shims in the way, so I'm gonna have to back up that bolt, but that's a perfect fit as far as the hole, hole size goes. So I'm really happy with that. And yeah, what a great Saturday morning. The birds are chirping, the lawn mowers are mowing, and uh, I got time to work on my truck. This is great. Hey dad, are you in here? Yeah, I'm right here, what's up? Can you take me to Calvin's? 